The Four Pillars of Investing Lessons for Building a Winning Portfolio by William J. Bernstein Pillar 1. Investment Theory In order to understand markets and investing, you must first understand the relationship between risk and reward. To get a higher expected return, you have to take more risk. Safe investments produce low returns. Beware of the sharks that promise both safety and very high returns. They either don't know what they're talking about or they're trying to scam you. The market is smarter than you. Stock picking and market timing do not work. Actively managed funds often underperform index funds because of the costs incurred in managing and transacting. According to Bernstein, index investing is the most reliable way to grow wealth over the long term. Market strategists know only two things. One, they don't know where the market is headed tomorrow, and two, their livelihood depends upon appearing to know. Asset allocation is the cornerstone to successful investing. This will be the most important portfolio decision you make. Asset allocation is the process of dividing our investments into different kinds of asset classes to minimise our risk and maximise our return. We do this by asking ourselves what investments should we select and what percentage should we allocate to each. Over the long term, investing in stocks is a difficult strategy to beat, but the market swings are probably too volatile for most people to tolerate. Therefore, diversification with other asset classes such as bonds could smooth the ride a little. Buying the whole market through a low-cost index fund is the best way to utilise the available market intelligence and information. Pillar 2. Investment History Over the four key areas of investing, theory, history, psychology and investment industry practices, the lack of historical knowledge is the one that causes the most damage. In order to understand the present, you need to learn from the history of the stock market. Bernstein takes a walk through the previous market manias, bubbles and crashes and demonstrates how they continue to follow the same cycle over and over again. Young investors should pray for a market crash. When everybody is jumping out of the market, it is often the best time to load up on stocks. When things look the worst, future returns are often the highest. By understanding the history of investing, you can make more considered rational choices and avoid making costly mistakes. Pillar 3. Investment Psychology The investor's chief problem and even his worst enemy is likely to be himself, Benjamin Graham. In other words, the number one impact on your investment returns is your own behaviour. Avoid these common investor mistakes. Ignore the past 10 years. Recent performance has little bearing on the future of a particular stock or mutual fund. Focusing on the wrong risk. People often focus on short-term performance. The biggest risk, however, is not a 30% market crash. The true risk is not sticking to a plan and chopping and changing strategies, or not saving enough, resulting in potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars less over their investing lifetime. Country Club Syndrome Wealthy people like to pay for status, but in the words of Bernstein, wealthy investors need to realise they are the cash cows of the investment industry and are regularly fleeced. Most expensive wealth managers and hedge funds have huge fees yet have earned lower returns than index funds. Recognise that the conventional wisdom is usually wrong. Don't participate in herd behaviour that exacerbates booms and busts. Avoid exciting investments. You shouldn't invest for entertainment. This isn't gambling. You invest to protect and grow your principal. And finally, know that the overall performance of your investment portfolio is more important than any single part. You will have investments that decline in value from year to year. Diversification helps to mitigate these losses. Pillar 4. Investment Business Your broker is not your friend. They are there to make a living off you. The interests of most fund companies are highly divergent from yours. You can only write so many articles that say, buy the market, keep your costs down and don't get too fancy, before it starts to get very old. So the magazines and newspapers resort to sensationalism to boost sales. Bernstein suggests that you'll be better off ignoring the financial media. 99% of what you read or hear in the financial media is advertising, cloaked as journalism. Instead, read some of the classic investing books, such as Common Sense on Mutual Funds by John Bogle, or A Random Walk Down Wall Street by Burton Malkiel. So there we have it. This book is probably more relevant now than ever. With so many distractions and scams constantly being pushed at us, with the tools explained to us in the four pillars of investing, we should be able to navigate the choppy waters 
to determine our own financial direction and assemble a sensible, suitable investment programme to enable us to build long-term wealth for ourselves and our family.